Good evening and welcome to the Bromford and Hodge Hill Ward Forum. And um, this evening we have it, we're holding the Ward Action Planning Meeting. So this is a, a one item agenda and it, it's about the ward priorities. Um, first of all, I'd just like to um, welcome everybody for, for coming out this evening. And uh, we'll, we'll do some introductions first, first of all. But I'd like to advise everybody that this meeting is being live streamed and will be available for future. So I'll, I'll go ahead with the introductions. Um, so first of all, we've got uh, Beverly Edmude who's managing the meeting. We've got Councillor Najib Mahmood. Um, sorry, the, the, the flicking up and down. Uh, we've got Rosa Lunat, the tenant liaison officer. Mike Hinton from Parks. We've got Nadim Aziz. It's, um, so what's your role, Nadim? It's a national Na neighborhood voice. action coordinator, Council Johnson. Neighborhood action coordinator. Thank you. And we've got Elaine Tarpey, resident. Joanne Green, resident. Uh, Jenny Tunbridge, resident. Sarah Royal from. It's from the, Birmingham Open Spaces Forum. We're a charity for all Parks Friends groups. Thank you. And is there anybody else I've missed out? Because I can't see everybody. Ah, good evening, Mohammed Ishak, resident. Um, I'm not a resident, but I. I'm the main organiser of the um, Mega Miller Warden Park and some other activities that go cross boundary. Thank you. Um, Penny Hall, resident, good evening. And Pat McCart, yeah. so we've got Pat McCartan, Pat Cheese, and Julie Ashton. Oh, I'm here as well, Councillor from Keogh. And Kevin Gibbard from Keogh. So I think we've, uh, we've made all the introductions, so with that, we can um, move on. I'm going to excuse myself, if that's okay. Yes, certainly. Okay, I thought there may be something on the agenda about the Mega Miller, but that's fine. I'll leave it to residents. It's about the ward planning priorities. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed, for dropping by. Bye-bye. Right, without further ado then, so we'll move on to the Bromford and Hodge Hill Ward planning and um, the, the priorities for 2002 to 2022 to 2026. Um, I've had uh, um, something that's been sent in by Hodge Hill Residents Group and it's what their priorities are what they would like to see happening. But is there anybody else here who's, who would like to have input on what they would like to see in the ward, the ward plan? Uh, yes, Sarah Royal from Birmingham Open Spaces Forum. I'm just here to talk about the importance of green spaces and setting up friends groups and how green spaces are essential in the ward plan. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, if you'd like to uh, your priorities. Sorry, did you did you want me to say it now? Yes, if you want yes. to. Got, so I've got Councillor Mahmood there who wants to say No, that. that's okay. Let Councillor Mahmood yeah. speak. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, so done. Thank you. Sorry. The ward the ward priorities are just for residents and we've got officers and uh, from the city council and um other stakeholders and partners in the meeting who like Sarah, hello Sarah, who are going to contribute towards that those priorities for the residents, for example. Birmingham Open Space Forum does a lot of work in terms of working with the friends group and one of the parties that we have got and something that we started pre-COVID was to establish friends groups for Hodge Common, Stetford Hall Park and the green open spaces in the Bromford because as you're aware we're doing a considerable amount of work on our green spaces and there's some future plans in that so that's something 
that's cropped up on many occasions by residents across the board. Unfortunately, a lot of them can't attend today. It's always the case whenever you have a meeting, uh, a lot of people say they will attend, but then when the meeting actually takes place, then people have other priorities, which is fair enough because everyone leads very busy school. I'm here myself in the council house, actually. I'll just come out of an Islamophobia event just to come to this ward forum. <laughs> so I think what we should be doing is just continuing off on the ward plan that we've got because some of those priorities still haven't, um, haven't been adopted because COVID came through last time between the four years that we've had. So it'd be really good, Chair, if you could ask some of the residents in this meeting if they have any specific priorities that they want us to include in the, into the ward plan. Thank you. Yeah, OK, so we'll, we'll come to you after. But um, sorry, I didn't realise you were not a resident. Um, Jenny, got your hand up. Yes, um, well, Following up from from what Sarah said, um, as someone living on Hodgehill Common, I'm I'm involved in early stages of conversations, and we're just about to um, host an open meeting in a couple of weeks um, about hopefully setting up a Friends of Hodgehill Common. So that certainly protecting our green spaces, and and I'll be working locally with with the nearer neighbours to, to to work towards doing something about the common. But obviously, we've got lots of other little pockets of green spaces in our ward and I think that should be a priority and that's really partly for me that's about valuing nature and all that can that, that, that contributes to our health and well-being but also to the ecology and the wider um, climate change issue and I think you know our, our top our biggest priority ought to be um, how climate change is affecting um, our, all of our lives now and in the future so the the kind of I know that there's work already being undertaken on 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 retrofitting and better insulation and so on in some of the housing, but questions of how that how all of our housing, the, the privately owned and the rented as well as uh, council owned properties, can be made to be um, as um, carbon neutral as possible. As as I mean that tackles the kind of cost of living stuff as well as the environmental stuff and the climate crisis stuff. So I think that ought to be very much at the top of our priorities. Um, and I know it's obviously on the agenda already, but I would certainly want to keep it as high up there as possible. Thank, thank you, Jenny. Anything else? Um, That's that, would it be, that is one of our, our main priorities. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it sort of echoes what we've received from uh, the residents of Hodge Hill, but we want to see that working. I don't know how that that is just specifically there for Hodge Hill residents, but um, it's we're looking at Bromford and Hodge Hill, so it, it needs to be inclusive across the ward. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Mahmood. Got your hand up or is that a legacy hand? <laughs> um, anyone else has uh, any other priorities that they'd like to see in incorporated into the ward plan? Okay, there's a couple of comments in the chat from uh, for Rosa. Do you want to have a look at those? About how number of priorities and uh, how. Yeah, yeah, I've answered that one to for Rosa. Um, she's asked if there's a, a limit on the number of priorities. Um, well, on the template, it says six. So I think six would be more than sufficient. Probably encompass everything that uh, this residents have as yeah, a priority. So in terms of housing, that was one of our priorities last time in 2018. It was housing regeneration priorities, similar to what Jenny has just talked about in terms of utilising and improving open space. And we've done a significant amount of work since, for example, Bromford North Park has now been refurbished. We've got the new play equipment in there. There's plans in motion for the green space on the former Warstone Tower site. That will also become a play area and uh, that's gone through consultation as well. So we're just waiting for the dates on that. And that will be our 632 park in the city as well. So I'm really proud of that. We've got an aspiration for a thousand. Climate change obviously is really important. It's in my portfolio anyway as the cabinet member. And again, I agree with Jenny. We're doing a lot of work around the retrofitting on Ridfield Road and I think it's Kempston Road. But more needs to be done. But we also need to put in... Um, priority of refurbishing and continuation of the work on the tower blocks 
in the Brumford as well, that needs to be a key priority going forward. I think also one of the things that we, we do need to put in, and it's something that residents have, have come to me uh, and, and, and yourself as well, Chair, we've had meetings with several residents, uh, because Bromford and Hodger Ward wasn't included in the selective licensing scheme. It wasn't one of the 25 wards, and that's because our numbers aren't as high as they are in other wards. But I do think we need to keep it as a priority, uh, try to include it into the into the selective licensing scheme when it's the next round. The, the, the main reason being is that Ward End and Alum Rock, our neighbouring wards, are included in that selective licensing scheme, which means you may get landlords moving tenants into uh, the Bromford and Hodges. So I do think that's a key plank going forward. And obviously, cleaner streets, safer streets, or it's, it's going to be a priority. Again, we've done a lot of work around the mobile household recycling trucks, and we now get two a month in the ward. And thank you to all the residents who who help in promoting that on social media and through word of mouth with, with their colleagues. I think that's really important. That's also like, for example, Wednesday, we've got the Love Your Environment Day in, in Bromford and Hodgill, and that's going to be the council that's coming up, just giving a good cleanup of the whole of the Bromford and Hodgill ward. And also, I think one of the parties has to be working with the third sector and community groups within Bromford and Hodgeo because we have the Hodgeo residents, we've got the Firds and Bromford together, we've got um, Tours has also now been doing some work in Bromford and Hodgeo. I think it's key to have them as one of the partners in, in the ward. And we've got Nadim Aziz now, who's the neighbourhood coordinator, so he can assist with, with us, uh, assist us in coordinating all of that work within the ward. Tree planting, I just saw that flash up. Yes, we're doing lots of trees. We're planting, replacing and adding more along the, the River Tame where we've had the, uh, um, the flood defence uh, put in. Once HS2 and the Environment Agency has gone from that part of the ward, there'll be lots of work that we can do. Also housing as well. Like It's not just the um, properties for retrofitting, but improving the condition. You, we both get lots of casework around bathrooms and kitchens in, in social housing. I think we need to do something around that. And highways, Kevin is here, Kevin Gibbons, and we've been quite blessed. We've managed to get a number of roads resurfaced. Bromford Drive, which is uh, the one that we want to get resurfaced, but because of the work that's been happening uh, around Bromford Drive, that's not been possible. But I have been speaking to the head of highways, and it's something that we're going to sit down and have a conversation with, because I said, how long are we actually going to have to wait for Bromford Drive to be resurfaced? Because there is um, development that's continuing. And the, the other, I think, the other uh, priority that we've got and we promised in, obviously both of us, Chair, were elected on a manifesto, part of that manifesto, including the installation of a new football pitch in in, in no, Bromford. Just come in, uh, Nigel, one moment, because Jenny's asking about selective licensing, so she would like to know more about selective licensing. Um, because okay, the, the the wards that have, have got selective licensing that's around the exempt accommodation. Um, so we we don't have many uh, exempt accommodations in Bromford and Hodge Hill, but that could that could change if there's um if there's more control in the other wards that are neighbouring. Then it, we may see an increase in our ward. Sorry. So what they did was any any ward which had more than twenty percent of rented accommodation, they had to, they became part of the selective licensing scheme. Bromford and Hodgkin missed out. Contrary to um, a, lot, a lot of the noise that comes around the ward, there isn't as many um, tenanted properties in the ward. But my my concern would be that if you've got neighbouring wards where they are, have a selective licensing, then you're going to get more people using properties in Bromford and Hodgkin for. For tenancy, and then we'll, with the problems that they've experienced, will probably come over to us. So I do think we need to keep an eye on it. And so, if we have it as a priority, that means that's one of the priorities that the ward will be um, fighting, lobbying for for the next four years because the state license comes into play. I think it's next year, June. So you may see a steady flow of more properties being rented in our ward because people could. Um, could could do away with, with with not having with paying the license. I've just realised I've only got ten percent left on my phone, so I'm going to stop and I'll only come back in when it's really important. Okay, thank you, um, Pat McCartan. Pat, you've got your hand raised. Hello, Pat, you're on mute. 
Sorry, Diane. Um, uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you uh, I, I, I blame the operator. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming back onto the point that Maggie made, doesn't it still come down to bidding, though? It doesn't matter how many places we've got in different areas. Surely it's got to come down to bidding. What about selective licensing? Yeah, selective licensing. Yeah. That, that, that's around the exempt accommodations. So there's more going to be more controls around exempt accommodations. But if the other wards have got these controls, then landlords will look to go to. I mean, we've got very few. Uh, exempt accommodations compared to wards like um, you know, Erdington, um, Stockland Green, etc. And uh, Ward End and Allen Rock. So if so, they have stricter controls, then landlords may look to come over to our ward and neighbouring wards. So that's something that we need to be very aware of and, um, and look to get selective licensing in this ward too. Thank you for clarifying that because I just didn't know. But our ordinary, so it still stands that our ordinary tenants in this area to get new accommodation, we still have to go through the bidding process. Yeah, for um, if you're on the housing list and to get, uh, yeah, you have to go through the bidding process. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir, Diane, just to clarify, the selective licensing is for all property, private properties in in those 25 wards where the landlord wishes to uh, place tenants in the properties. It's going to cost landlords £700 for five years. The scheme is going to commence April the 1st next year, 2023, and Alamrock and um, yeah, Ward End is included in that list. So, which means that you may get displacement of tenants coming in within Bromford and, and Hodge. So, I think it's it's key that we keep that within um, one of our priorities to try to. So, when there is a next round, because I'm assuming it won't be the other 25, how many other wards is there? 25, yeah, 25, 19, another 30, um, 34 wards. We want to make sure we're in the next batch that are able to obtain that because I think that would be a game change in terms of having more stringent controls and landlords so that we have lots of fly tipping issues as well just within my portfolio. Also antisocial behaviour needs to be included within the priorities. Uh, we still get quite a lot around um, Brockers Road with the sheltered housing scheme and we've got um, we, we we've always had fly tipping on on Hodge Common ever since we removed that car park. That's just become a fly tipping grot spot and we've tried everything and we'll continue trying. And also parts of the Bromford where you have lots of ASB on the night. And I've, um, you know, that's something that we need to be working with the police as well on that. And I think we could have, add on to what Jenny had said, just the overall climate change agenda. You can just have that as an environment. So that includes your parks and open spaces and also the climate change. And this is based not just on, me as a resident and as elected member, but also based on conversations that I've had with lots of residents who couldn't attend the meeting today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, that echoes what um, the Hodge Hill Residents Group have requested. Um, it's a developing your long term plan for the enhancement of Hodge Hill Common by ending the daily fly tipping and gas canister abuse of Hodge Hill Common through in a combination of security camera policing and physical design measures. Um, so I don't know what physical design measures could be put in place there. Exactly they're suggest suggesting that needs to be explored. Um, fly Chair, can you yeah. ask? Sorry. Yeah. I was going to suggest if there's any other residents in the meeting, there's a there's quite a lot of residents in the meeting. Ask them if there's any priorities that we've not we've overlooked and anything that they would want to include, and then we can move on to offices to see um, their perspective and bring in people like Sarah from the Birmingham Open Spaces Forum just to discuss how the process would be involved in terms of establishing a friends group, etc. Thank you. Is there anybody that would like to come in and uh, add any?
priorities to the list. See, I think you have hand raised Penny Paul. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, Penny. Hello. Yes, I'm not sure it is an extra priority, but a way of um, finding out what priority should be. Um, I'm sure you're aware that all, uh, just like Jenny's has a real interest in Hodge Hill Common, that there are uh, community green connectors in on the Firs and Bronkford um, doing work such as um, Elaine and Mary at uh, Ambridge House and um, through the hub, there is a green connector, um, or there will be two green connectors, with groups of people already working on the green spaces. And it would be great if the priority, the people putting the actions into place would actually liaise with those people. So it's important that they know who they are um, so that they're not just duplicating or starting something new, um, but actually um, finding out what's going on already and working together with people. Um, so what, rather than yeah. somebody coming in and making suggestions <laughs> that are... Uh, so what are your priorities trip? for the green spaces on the Bronx? So, so uh, as a, on a personal level, um, so I'd like to see um, a, 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 a build-up of, of um, residents' engagement in the use of community spaces and keeping them looking presentable and usable, but working with the council. So I'd just like to see it led from the residents upwards, but obviously we need the council support and the support of any other like-minded groups. I'm sorry if that's a bit vague. Uh, yeah. If you, if you want to you know, elaborate on that, it's fine if we've got something more tangible. Um, okay, so um, perhaps uh, developing um, the use of the green spaces, because quite a lot on the Bromford, and I think probably on the Firs as well, but I, I live on the Bromford, so, um, so it may be getting community groups to set up growing of vegetable patches in some of our green spaces, for instance, um, uh, looking at uh, the green space where the tower has come down in the but near the row of shops and how that's going to be developed for local use I think that's the heritage center is planned to be developed there um, so looking at nature-based solutions um, so that's where residents might get involved but it might need some guidance from people with more expertise thank you that's all right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Penny. Uh, I'm just reading out what um, Jenny's been saying. She's working with David from Hodgshaw Residence Group with the hope of setting up a friends group for Hodgshaw Common and will hope to be working as a group with the council in the future to address the fly tipping issues. Um, okay, uh, Councillor Mahmood has replied that. Um, We've been working with Mohammed Imran before COVID-19 to establish a group, but COVID-19 postponed that. It'd be great if we could all sit with residents who live on the common to arrange. I agree, better networking between community groups and residents and using the working in group spaces. Um, and Pat McCartan has asked, where is the Heritage Centre going? Um, good question. Uh, if Anybody has any information on the Heritage Centre? Uh, I don't, we've had no further information. Councillor Namu, do you know any, do you any further information about the Heritage Centre? I oh, don't personally, I know there was, there was a discussion quite a while back, but that was on the former Wallstone Tower site, but that's already gone through a consultation for a play area, toddler area and a picnic area for residents which has gone through but it's up to the residents to decide where they would want yeah, it but I then there's the plans I'm not aware of any plans that's all I can say on that one um oh. Penny is that a legacy hand no hands gone down Sorry. Yes. Yes. Only to say that um, that that's the area, the the old Warstone Tower area that I thought that was part of the 
uh, the thoughts that would go on to that picnic area, playground, etc. Um, that something of a heritage centre would be around that area. But that's just um, you know aspirations from some of the residents. Um, but but certainly the green the space plans come into planning or anything. But until okay. it comes into planning, um, it, it's it's not in our hands. No, no, that's fine. It's just I know that that's been looked into from certainly from a resident's point of view. I thought it had got a bit further than that. OK. OK, thank you. Just in terms, Chair, in terms of the green spaces that have been referred to in the Bromford and Furs, the majority, in fact, all of them, except the parks, are actually housing land green spaces. So it's going to be a conversation that we need to have with housing and perhaps for Rosa, I think, is in the meeting. She could assist in terms of what is the process where we would want to develop housing land. It's a bit more trickier than parkland. Rosa's still with us anyway. We can catch up at a later date about that. Okay, the only thing I just wanted to mention, Chair, was that HOB are having a meeting on Wednesday. I think it was mentioned before that they wanted to add in some of the priorities once they've had their meeting, which is a constituted oh. group. And, and I think it would be good if we can work with the HRB residents as well on Wednesday to add in anything that uh, that they would want to see as a priority. Yes, certainly. That in as well. Um, from personal point of view, I would like to see um, priorities around accessibility for disabled people. If um, open spaces could be in, um, very disabled uh, friendly um, parts of disabilities, um, and if this could be in mind when we go through the, the planning process. Um, I don't see anyone else who's got their hand up who would like to with any more contributions. I guess so before it to Hello Subi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the the ward action planning meeting. Is there an, um, what we, we're just speaking to residents now and say, asking if their priorities, if they would like priorities included to the ward plan? Is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, I think having looked at what was there, it covered a lot of things. Um, I think maybe. The one thing I wondered about was um, kind of skilling, uh, skilling up local community for jobs and particularly things like retrofitting. Yeah, the um, retrofitting program is, um, I believe, the uh, they're all well, they're setting up the site, so that's already started. But um, Equan's uh, company that's carrying out is. is They've got apprenticeship programs, so that's something that could be promoted to um, a resident. Yeah, Chair, I think that's a really good suggestion because with the opening of Dolphin Centre, that's going to be a skill centre. So that could be used like if we included a priority as education, attainment and skills. So it's not just about you know getting your grades at GCSE A level, etc. It's also about learning new skills, especially for um, some of the more elderly community as well so they can learn a new skill and with all the retrofitting work that's going to take place in Bromford it would be good if we can get locals employed but clearly we need to um, teach them a trade so that they can get involved in that. So I think if we put that down as a priority then the City Council would, would have to basically prioritise any type of training and skills that are offered to uh, to residents. I think that would be a good one. Uh, 
Pat, did you catch everything? You said I was going quiet. Might be need to move, move the computer a bit closer. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you a bit better now. Thanks. Okay. okay. Right. Um, other priorities regarding safe, secure road safety, pavements, potholes, crime and antisocial behaviour. Are there any thoughts on those? I would like to see those incorporated into the ward plan. Pat? Yeah, it's Pat Cheese. Um, the only thing, I mean, I have mentioned it before, with the new street lighting that we have, um, is there any way that it can be a, a higher bulb rate or something going in? I know they're LED now, but the, the area's gone so dark and there's, there's blind spots now. Where's the orange lights used? I mean, they may have been annoying, but they did reach far further in inwards from the road. Now we've got black spots that you can't see. Where you well, you can see where you're going, but you you can't see um, in the distance. You know, like if you're walking along the pavement, all you're seeing now is shadows, dark, you know, dark silhouettes is the word okay. uh, instead of actual people. I think Kevin, uh, Kevin Given, who's I think he's got his hand up, so he may wish to come in on this, Kevin. Yeah, I can give you an answer on that one. Yeah. So the LED, the difference between the the LED lights as, and the and the the orange lights, as you put it, the is the the way the shadows are cast. The white light that's produced by the LED is a much cleaner light. It may appear to be darker, but your eyes will pick it up as clearer. But if there are any areas that you need us to check out to make sure that the area that you think is a, is a, is an area of concern, more than happy to pass that back through to lighting to get them to survey it. Yeah, um, it's it's actually, um, I don't know about the whole of the Bromford Drive, but the section by, <coughs> excuse me, um, by the Chipfield Road, um, it's by the bus stop that's there. The pavement is further back from the road. There's two pavements, one a bit nearer the road and one further back from the road. Right. And there's a green space. It's where the new housing's being built. And yeah, yeah. if you're walking from Folkestone Croft, that's the one where the post box is on, down the path, as I say, anybody by the bus stop, instead of where we used to be able to see that they were, you know, um, clearer, instead of a silhouette, you're just seeing shadows now around the bus stop, whereas before with the orange lights, we could actually see people. Okay. No problem. I can feed that back. I'll feed that back and get it checked out for you. OK, thank you. No problem. Thanks. Um, so uh, potholes, pavements, potholes. Um, there has been significant work being carried out already by by here. Like, look over from Amy. Um, Kevin, would you like to come in and t tell us more about the programme of works? Going forward. Yeah, sure. We've got a couple of a couple of schemes that are coming up in your ward over the next few months. Um, just grab this up. So we we Stetford Road, I believe, is completed now. Um, we've got Buckland's End Lane that's going to be fully resurfaced. Hodgill Road is going to be fully resurfaced finally, uh, and we've got Chatter Close as well which is also going to have a footway and a carriageway scheme done on it at some point in the next block of works. I've got no dates confirmed for these yet, but the the, the leaflets will be delivered um, to the residents and councillors when the, as soon as they become available. I also have to ask about um, Bromford Road, but the continuation of the road that's um, it's a side road that's behind uh, hedges. They've had um, flooding now. The service road. Service road, yeah. Okay. I'll make a note and get all of that looked at for you. Uh, Bromford Road. Yeah, it's Bromford Road. It's 
um, by the common and. Uh, so just on that, can we continue? Area. And um, there's a lot of uh, a big hedge that hides it, so you can't see it from yeah, the main. I know where it is, yeah. They have issues with the drains there, and there a lot of flooding and a lot of potholes. It's sort of got everywhere. The rest of the road was resurfaced, and that left off. Okay. Uh, I'll take Penny. Penny's got a hand up. Hello. Um, on the pavements, uh, so I think this is Kevin probably. Um, so it's a bit of a question and a priority if the question isn't uh, is a negative, uh, the answers are negative. Um, so a few years ago, I did a bit of a survey in um, so Coles Hill Road, Bromford Road and Stetchford Road and, and the main roads leading from the Fox and Goose area to the uh, to the common um, to see um, if I could walk along um, accompanying someone in a wheelchair and um, in I gave up in the end because I realised that you couldn't and you definitely couldn't get past the common with somebody in a wheelchair through lack of dropped curbs. Okay. Um, um, that's and in one place, I think it was up to Ventnor Avenue, going from the Fox and Goose across Ventnor Avenue. Uh, the person in the wheelchair got right, right across to the other side and realised he couldn't get up the other side because there wasn't a drop curb there okay. without having to go onto the main road and up somebody's um, right. run up for their drive. Uh, we did have so, um, a resident who reported uh, uh, the he was trying to get over to the doctor's surgery the other side of the Fox and Goose, and I had um, some. So drop curbs, you know, the, the ones with the uh, pimples on them, I call them, the, the uh, pads with, I think the technical... Tactile paving, tactile paving. Tactile <laughs> paving, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we've had some drop curbs with the tactile paving installed, so the journey could be made. Um, but I'm keen to hear of any others. We've had non, no others reported to us. So if you see no. it reported, then that's something that we can... Yeah. Know, maybe, I think um, probably quite a good idea would be to every time there is some work going on in the area is to actually ask the people that are surveying the work or whatever are going to be doing the work um, to look first at certainly along a main road. Every time there's a side road, somebody in a wheelchair or with a, a buggy or a pram or whatever should be able to get to cross the road at that point. So um, it would be good if that isn't already, <laughs> if it could uh, be a, a priority. priority yeah. um, I think the Fern and Bromford isn't so bad because I think that was obviously built into the uh, design of the area. Um, but um, the rest of Hodge Hill is older and it obviously disability and accessibility wasn't a priority then, I guess. It needs updating. Um, we'll make Thank, you. That priority. Thank you, Penny. Uh, Councillor Mahmood? Yeah, I was just going to say that we had highways and parking as a uh, priority for 218 to 2023. Can we just add on to that, continue with that and just add road safety to that as well? So then it covers all three measures that we've got in terms of the highways. So that would include the improvements, include all the work we're doing to make it safer, especially around the schools, which has always been our priority. I think one of the priorities needs to be is get Bromford, sorry, Brockers Road, um, the, the footway resurfaced. So I was going to say that we've got um, we've got the uh, new neighbourhood coordinator. Now that the residents have, have, have all managed to um, share with us uh, their thoughts on priorities, it'd be good if 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 Nadim could just um, have five minutes to let people know how he's going to help coordinate all these different priorities that the ward is going to get because uh, I think there's only 20 wards in the city that have got a neighbourhood coordinator so we need to make full use of him whilst he's here. Yeah, you, okay. yeah th th thank you uh, Councillor Mahmood, that, that's really helpful. I uh, hope you can hear me okay. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right and it's really, uh, first of all, good evening everyone um, and it's really kind of exciting to hear uh, what the local priorities are being driven by local people. Obviously, Councillor Mahmood is absolutely right. The, the Neighbourhood Action Coordination Pilot uh, has been developed to provide, as Councillor Mahmood has rightly said, a resource in the local area. 
uh, to build a detailed grassroots level understanding of the neighbourhood's priorities. So it's fantastic to hear about what those priorities are today. Um, essentially, and in a nutshell, my work is to coordinate communities, partner organisations and council services to make the difference the community wants to see. Uh, I think that links very much into what you, you said, your good self, Penny, what you were talking about, and Jenny, what, what you mentioned around potentially around green spaces. And it's fantastic also to, to, to have Sarah Rawl from Birmingham Open Spaces Forum here. In a nutshell, as a neighbourhood action coordinator, my role pretty much is to do a couple of things. Number one, empower communities to take action to improve their neighbourhood. Act as the enabler, as the resource on the ground to connect residents and council services. So that's more around tasking and coordination. But critically for me, to enable and or enhance coordinated action across services and communities to benefit local neighbourhoods. And then that links into very much what I'm doing right now at the moment, which is developing community led action plans based on these local pr priorities. And that very much focuses on asset based community development. Uh, and the themes that we've picked up on today very much lead into my three themes as enabled action coordinator, which are street scene, which links into the council strategy of a bold uh, green ward. Uh, community safety, which links into the council strategy of a bold, safe ward and deprivation and quality of life. And that links into the council strategy of a bold, healthy ward and a bold, prosperous ward. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning that environment is the key driver behind the creation of the Neighbourhood Action Coordinator project. And that's going to be the golden thread, which will be running through the whole and the entirety of the Neighbourhood Action Coordinating project. And all of the other aspects and the themes that I've just men mentioned will need to be seen through that theme. So when actions need to be taken, I mean, we could think out loud, for example, and it has been mentioned by Councillor Mahmood, uh, mobile household recycling wagons, uh, love your streets action days, you know, street watch. There are a number of themes that you've mentioned today and what could easily underpin a lot of that stuff could easily be some of that, some of that, that activity. Um, just mentioning, for example, in terms of a bold safe ward that could link into antisocial behaviour, community safety, street watch, reducing speed limiting on residential roads. In terms of a bold green ward, and I'm sure many of you have raised this issue, that could be to do with parks, allotments, community gardens, refuse and recycling, litter picking, repairing and upcycling, promoting cycling and walking, and critically volunteering. And over the last few months, I have been working, many of the people that are, are, in, are here today, I have been working very closely with them. I look forward to continuing to work very closely with both councillors and local community groups to kind of move this forward. And I will be setting up in the, which will be next week. And Councillor Donaldson, I think you've got the invite for the NAC steering group, which we're scheduling for next Wednesday morning. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I've sent over an MS Teams invite. So that will critically pick up some of the themes that we've picked up today in the priority. So look forward to continue to work with you in, in, in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. Um, so other key areas, health and well-being, consideration, keeping fit and healthy and support for older people. If there's anything that uh, any thoughts around those areas, or any suggestions. Um, Pat, I've got Pat McCartan's hand up, so it could be any. Yeah, um, I know that Nadine is going to attend um, the HLB on Wednesday, but I just wondered if I've got two of my members here with me, um, and I'm, I hope I'm speaking for the rest of the board, whether Nadine would like to give us some sort of a, if we can offer him to come to February's meeting and give, give us 10 minutes of his time, to let us know exactly what his ideas are for the area, and then we can give him feedback from the HLB. Uh, if I can just very quickly come in, uh, yes, yes and yes. Um, for me as a neighbourhood action coordinator, I mean, obviously I, I'm not just a neighbourhood action coordinator for Bromford and Hodgill, but also the Chardin wards. Interestingly, that this morning I ran my first steering group in the Chardin ward, uh, which was a fantastic success. If we can replicate anywhere near what we did today 
in the Bronfen Hodge Award, it will be a great success, Pat. So my m one of my biggest focuses very uh, within week one of me joining was to connect with Feroza. Uh, in particular, I wanted to very much focus at, uh, where the need was the greatest. And that really, for me, linked into housing. So Pat, I very much look forward to working with you in this role because I do understand much on the ground that there are issues that link into these three themes, greener streets, Councillor Mahmood was talking about this. I am coming to, uh, I think it's your HLB uh, meeting, I think it's on Wednesday, isn't it, if I'm right? That's right, yeah. That's right, so I'll be coming to that, but also you do also have an invite to the steering group and you'll be a permanent member of that council moving forward, as will I, I'm sure your, your, your deputy as well. So very much plugged into to what you're doing and what you're thinking, Pat, but also equally working with the community groups on the ground. Penny, really good to hear your thoughts. And also with Jenny, and I have been working with the Hodgell Residents Association. Councillor Mahmood, thank you for raising the point about Imran and the fact that there was also uh, tentative discussions prior to COVID lockdown, where there were the local groups on the ground already thinking about um, working and developing a, a friends of group. Very excited about that, bringing the whole of the community together. Council Donaldson and Council Mahmood very much will plug you into that as we develop things moving forward. I think there is a meeting, an open meeting, as, as was alluded to in the comments in the next couple of weeks. So it will be really good to see how that develops. Sarah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well, please. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Kevin, sorry, Kevin's got his on that. Yeah, super quick one. Nadim, I am I'm the highway steward for the whole of the east of Birmingham. So any of any any of any use I can be with highway maintenance issues, use me. Thank you, Kevin. Really appreciate so it. Add, add, add me to the steering groups, that's fine. I'm already doing one for spark part of one for Spark Hill. Um more than happy to be involved and give my Give my help where it's needed. Very quickly, Kevin. It's next Wednesday. It's at, it's it, in fact it was mentioned earlier. It's at the Brockhurst Road sheltered accommodation. Most of the people will be attending in person. We are making it hybrid, but if I can share the invite to you, which I will do after this meeting, if you Perfect. can attend, that would be absolutely great. We also will have people like uh, waste enforcement and uh, and also uh, Sergeant Alan Keynes from uh, uh, Bromford and Hodgill Police. So uh, there's a lot to cover, but re really welcome your thoughts on that. Thank you. Great stuff. I'll um, I'll drop you a quick message now just with my email address on it. Grateful. Th thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Sarah, would you like to come in on the building of most open spaces? Hello, everybody. Yes. So Birmingham Open Spaces Forum, we're a charity for all community groups interested in parks and open spaces. So what we can do is um, help set up new groups, bring existing groups that are out there and just join them into the network. We've got a network of about 130 groups across the whole of Birmingham, all community led, all interested in improving their local open space. But we've also got groups who are litter picking and just improving their environment where they don't have an open space as well. So what we can do is we've got quite a network of groups out there. So we try to get everyone together, usually over tea, coffee and cake, just to chat, to share experiences, to find out more from what other groups have done. And just so that no groups feel that they're on their own with what they're doing, because there are so many people out there doing so much wonderful stuff. It's great to share it all. Um, we can get groups that are working on Birmingham City Council land, we can get them free insurance to come and join us so that they don't have to find the money to buy for their own insurance. We've also got a good relationship with Get Grants. Um, they're, they're expert fundraisers, they're based in Moseley. They know all about where to go for funding and how to write funding bids. So we thankfully got some money through Birmingham City Council to pay for Get Grants experience to, so they can work with our community groups free of charge, which is absolutely wonderful. Again, it's battling another barrier, which is there for, for groups to improve their open spaces. So um, we I heard about the, um, the groups already going in the Furs and Bromford. Um, which is absolutely brilliant. So it would be wonderful to speak to them more so they can learn from us, we can learn from them um, and we can get them involved in the network and it will be absolutely wonderful because more people out there 
doing and improving their open spaces, the, the, the better it is, the more skills, the more experience we can get together. So I've been speaking with Jenny and um, David from Hodge Hill to try and get a group going for Hodge Hill Common. So anybody else interested, let's get everyone together and get a group going for that. Um, and if there's any other open spaces or litter picking groups out there who want to come join us, I'm very happy to come along, help out, chat, get to know them and see what we can do to help. So, yeah, any questions, I'm open for them. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And that would tie in with the, um, the keeping fit and healthy and um, perhaps support for older people as well. Very much so. Quite a few of our groups have got funding through the neighbourhood network schemes to get Tai Chi going on in their yeah. parks and open spaces, which is really good fun to join in with. Yeah, yeah. And it really helps all ages, all ability just to get out there and be active in their open space. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mahmood, you've got your hand up. So I was just going to call in Sarah. She said exactly what I was going to basically say, that it's really important that we get all the residents who are interested in setting up, establishing a group together, because I think I've been speaking to one group and David Park has been speaking to another group. I think it's imperative we get them together and we go with, um, we, we, we ensure that it's established, not just because it would help us in the long run in maintaining and supporting our parks and open spaces, in the area, but also there's also a um, the uh, Sarah uh, through uh, Birmingham Open Space Forum. They also support in in letting them letting the groups know where there's grant funding available outside of the city council. So there's lots of external funding which we as councillors can't tap into because uh, we're the city council. But friends groups and other groups, community groups can actually uh, apply for that funding. And across the city, you've got an example of Friends of Cottage Park. They've bought in tens of thousands of pounds into Cottage Park and they've even got a community building. And that's all come about from the fundraising that they've done and through support of Birmingham Open Spaces Forum. Uh, Birmingham Open Spaces, they do a fantastic job for the city. And it's um, it's something that council, other councils come to Birmingham and ask us how you know we, we work with Birmingham Open Spaces Forum. People like Sarah, they're, they're brilliant officers in, in their own regard. So I think the more we can, I think we're in a good space now, uh, more so than even four years ago, because we didn't have all the different networks to support us. Now we've also got a neighbourhood coordinator as well, whose job would be to bring all the different groups together and all the different officers and partners and stakeholders. So I think we've got a good set of priorities now listed and we can add on to them uh, following on the residence meeting on Wednesday with HRP mem members, because I know a lot of them aren't able to come into in, into these type of meetings as well. So I think it'll be it'll, it'll be really we're in a good space going forward. So thank you, Sarah, for attending the meeting for everything you do for the city as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Um, uh, Mike Hinton. Yeah, welcome, Mike. Uh, if you'd like to give us an overview of the work that's happening in Bromford and Hodgehill. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Donaldson. Um, yeah, first of all, I'd like to um, just uh, raise the issue of tree planting, certainly on the flood defences. Uh, I've attended a meeting today and there's over 300 trees going in uh, and the work on that will start on the 17th of November uh, for a period of about eight weeks. So that's uh, quite imminent, really, at the uh, end of the day. Um, we, as Sarah has said, um, we, we, we also like to work closely with um, BOSFA and friends groups, etc. And we can assist in terms of uh, where there's litter picking taking place, we can take litter away. Um, also, if, they, if people want any uh, features such as benches or anything, and they can get funding through uh, various uh, organisations. I can certainly arrange for installation and that sort of thing of benches and uh, litter bins, that sort of thing. And I'd just like to point out on the flood defence area uh, in the near future, we will be installing um, certainly three new litter bins. Uh, and once the final section has been completed, um, which is up by the Chester Road, we'll be putting in another two um, litter bins as well. So that'd be a total of five. Um, the other thing somebody raised was the issue of vegetable growing. Um, and it would be interesting to see 
where people would like to do that um, and uh, to see certainly what the implications are. And uh, I'm not sure whether it's something, you know, any particular area in mind for that sort of thing. So um, if, you, if you want to pick up on that, I can always investigate to see uh, whether or not it's possible. OK. Thank you, Mike. I think um, Thank you, Mike. The, there is some uh, vegetable growing that's been programmed for um, the HLB are funded for the Arkle Croft area. Right. OK. I, I have been involved with some groups throughout the city and uh, it does work very well. Good. Uh, have someone moved? Yeah, I'm just going to say, Mike, you stole my thunder. I was looking forward to standing next to the new litter bins with Dan, making that announcement that we've got them and planting of the trees. Now you've just gone and told everyone. But... <laughs> Sorry, councillor. It's all right. We've got plenty more parks where we're installing benches and bins, so uh, we can all do right. it there. Right. I've sorted some out for small height anyway. I know you have. We've taken those photos. <laughs> I'll let you have priority on that, councillor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Chair, my phone's going to go off any second now, so when I've left the meeting, it's not out of choice, it's because the battery's gone. Um, right, Mike, I've got uh, John Green who's come in. Are fruit trees going in along the HS2 path? I think, I think going to the cycle path along the Bund. I don't think they are. I think they're... Um sort of naturalistic trees, trees that would normally be growing there, you know, they picked up on what's already growing there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think to be quite honest, sometimes um, we have had issues with uh, vegetable, uh, sorry, trees, apple trees, that sort of thing. Um, and people do on occasions use them as weapons but that's the downside to it. But uh, again, Let's have a look at an area and we can see the feasibility of it. Uh, so the, uh, Sue B has said there's several areas with community beds around the Bromford area, some which need reinvigorating. OK, yeah. Um, Sue, so which, which ones are they? Which ones are you referring to? Could you clarify, please? Um, yeah, there's a few. There's uh, some down near the pillars, I think, which um, I'm not sure who looks after those. Uh, the ones outside my house, I have to admit, need um, need some help working with those. Um, so I have been talking to um, Street Connectors today about whether there's anybody who might be interested in doing a bit of community gardening or whether one of the groups, the women's group or something would be interested. But um, yeah, it'd be nice if there was someone maybe to coordinate some of these beds that are actually already in the area, which could perhaps be um, used more positively for the community, for growing vegetables and things. So. I'm sure there's plenty of volunteers out there who'd like to get involved and uh interested in, in growing vegetables, especially the um, cost of living crisis. I think that's something that will become very popular going forward. Um, I think the, 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 um, the HLB clarify how many beds they've got going in in Arkle Croft. not about planting of trees it's about planters that have been put in yeah it's about planters yeah the planters of yeah. um they went in last week i think there's four in total and the soil went oh, the soil, yeah the soil went in yes today yesterday oh, that's excellent so they'll be planted so up. Oh, for, yeah so um kath fletcher will be yeah with the residents to um plant well, fine planting that they want to put in 
the choice of what race. Sort of, or around vegetables and, and uh, yeah, there's a there's going to be a mixture. Yeah. Excellent. That's good news. Um, through the comments. Uh, uh, Jenny's commented about the uh, fruit trees because uh, the fruit could be used as weapons, yes, but um, it could also be used positively. Let's not negative uh, put us off. Um, yeah, the environmental agency have been in touch about planting trees around the flood defence. Uh, Ron Williams from the council is currently inquiring how many schools, community groups, HRBs, etc., would like to be involved. And Jenny has added, as a local tree warden in training, I would like to keep up to date with what is going on, be involved as po if possible. Certainly, Jenny will be involved with um, all the, the, the tree initiatives going forward. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, any other comments or questions, evidence? Okay. Um, now Beverly has a, a noted policing issues, concerns. Do you have any policing issues, concerns? I think just for us, it's more about the police actually attending or providing a report to the HLBs because we've not had police attendance for some time. Yeah. Um, and and that's we, we've just, got a new sergeant. I've been in contact to uh, raise this. We have a, a, a meeting. Uh, uh, she was in attendance at the last meeting um, and I've raised it, the issue of... Um, the lack of attendance from police because it's, it's been a long time either at the ward forum or HRB we haven't seen the attendance but um, said that's going to change going forward uh, and at the next ward forum we will have the police in attendance. Um, just a quick question. Any... Oh. I just ask a quick yes, question to Sarah. Um, are you covering other wards as well and not just Bromford? Yes, we covered the whole of Birmingham. So, uh, yeah, all, all, all the wards in Birmingham. OK, I'll drop you a line because I think there might be a project in another ward. Thanks. Yes, no problem. Here we go. This is Sarah. Any other questions? Ah. Are there plans for how tree planting can help with the climate, air and heat? Um, tree planting will that will help. It's um, your the carbon dioxide, so that will help the the climate. Or tree planting. Yeah, I was thinking particularly of um, strategic um, planting of trees and things. Um, well, and any green foliage, etc., to help with cooling the area in the summer when it gets you know, very hot with the um, climate change and also um, particularly in areas where some of the new housing is going in, um, you know, are there plans to hopefully to uh, keep keep and increase the, the, plant, the tree planting around those? Yeah, and also obviously the air quality. The, the best trees for to provide um, Better air quality. Everything will be have the experts come in and advise on these issues. A, a tree expert myself, but um, and we've got Jenny as well, um, who in training. So I'm sure that uh, her expertise will be most welcome. Um, and then the other input that residents have regarding this take that on board.
So Joanne, also warm spaces maybe help people with mental health isolation issues to meet and connect in safe environments. But Joanne, are you talking about indoor spaces? Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello, Joanne. Um, just in general, since lockdown, I noticed a lot of people that I've talked to have, there's been a really high increase in mental health issues, but also obviously look into the future. Some people aren't going to be able to afford to heat their homes and maybe there could be spaces that were open that could provide a space where people could maybe get hot drinks and things like that sort of thing. I know, I know there's places people can go. There's a lot of things going on in the community, but um, maybe if people knew it was somewhere specifically where they would be warm, etc. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure, just personally myself, like I noticed anxiety and things like that have risen a lot and there's a lot more people staying inside. That that that's what I think is one of the in it uh, I think the council's um, going to extend because warm spaces, especially mm. with the, the uh, cost of living crisis and you know, a lot of people are struggling now to heat um their their homes. So they're choosing uh, food over heating so um, mm. this is something that the, the council is actively encouraging warm spaces so people can meet up um, they're, they're, they're going through a process now of identifying locations and uh, yeah. you know obtaining grants etc so that that will be very mm. you will see this going forward and it's something that the um, active well-being society are mm. promoting as well I put some, something up on our Facebook page, and there's a a link that you can go to the Active Wellbeing Society and see um, a lot of advice there, and uh, more projects that come on board will be listed there, uh, not just in our ward but across the city. So there's a lot of useful information and um, help. So I would recommend that you go. I've put the link on uh, our. Mm. Uh, Facebook page, so you're welcome to go there. Um, thank, thank you, Joanne. Yeah, some, sometimes one thing I always thought, because I know there's other people from different areas, I think it would be a massive task, though, is to have like a community bus so people could go and have access to get to supermarkets where they could afford afford the food more do you see what i mean but that's like a very i think there'd be have to be a lot involved in that but i i think that would be sounds like it sounds like a good idea that's um something yeah. that could be funded so there's a lot of funding um opportunities out there so it's just trying to get the right funding and see who could organize the volunteers so there's plenty of yeah volunteers yeah. and plenty of groups out there so uh, just want to take take the initiative and, and set something up. Yeah. Thanks, Joanne. Um, Councilor Mahmood, before your battery dies totally. Yeah, it's on one percent, so I probably go one to skull. I was going to say there's forty well, warm welcome places in Birmingham that the council has set up. The nearest is Stetchford Leisure Centre, but I think it would be good, Chair, if if we could as a ward forum write to the cabinet member and ask that there's a warm welcome space within the Bromford and Hodge ward for them to locate a place for people to go to as possible outside of the ward. I think there is a number of buildings that could be utilised. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mahmood, you want to make comments? Maybe he's typing something away. Yeah, the, uh, the, the cheapest supermarket, to my knowledge, is at the Fox and Goose. It's probably about one and a half miles from the uh, furthest point in the ward. 
So if you've, um, I suppose it's it, if you haven't got a car, then it can be very awkward. So uh, a, sort of a bus service, a local bus service would be um, a very good idea. Any other comments? And Dooms added that the um, Shard End Wellbeing being Centre is also a designated warm hub place. Um, I'm sure this applies to all BCC owned facilities. Um, so there, there are 40 that have been rolled out, as Councillor Mahmood was saying. So I'm not, um, that's a starting point, but there will be more when um, spaces become identified. But uh, Shard End Wellbeing Centre is for Bromford and Hodgehill, well, that's, that's quite a, a trek, so it wouldn't be accessible to most of Bromford and Hodgehill residents, but that's something that we will investigate going forward to uh, identify somewhere in the ward that we can have the same facilities. That's, that's one of our main priorities. But, um, before we close the meeting, is there any other comments? Okay. Well, thank you everyone for attending this evening. I've got comments going up in the chat as well. The Hub Hodgehill Church and other local groups are putting together a list of open sessions with a warm welcome in our area. That's very welcome news. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, if you, Jenny, if you can send us the information for um, those those sessions, I'll, I'll happily put um, put those on our uh, Facebook page, and we can. Um, uh, Al Barrett, those. Thank, thank you. Me. Al Al Barrett's finalising the um the kind of list for the whole week, and we're planning to make a leaflet of it, but also register them on the on the Birmingham wide warm warm welcome kind of network and and, and national network so it'll it'll be available soon okay thank you since it's available please let us know and then we'll yeah. publicize it as well brilliant well thank you everyone thanks for your attendance and participation and we look forward to seeing you at the next uh Bromford and Hodge award for thank you thank you for coming along and thank you very much thank you thank bye -bye. you